Our conference today is titled Pan-Africanism for a New Generation. I think Dr. Patricia Daly helped us come up with after wrestling around with for a, for a couple of weeks. We would earlier played around with titles such as Arrested Development or Africa Uniting or Africa versus the world. I mean, all sorts of ideas, but I think this is one that we thought spoke to our concerns best. As we attempt to come up with answers to our collective predicament, we thought evoking and reaching out to a force that has proven to be of much help in the world would still be very relevant. It was the Pan-Africanism of the late 19th century that helped end slavery. It was Pan-Africanism of the 1950s that brought an end to colonial rule. We are hence convinced that it will be Pan-Africanism this 21st century that will help Africa unite sustainably to face its economic, political, and social challenges. It's not about uniting for the sake of being hip or cool, but out of sheer necessity, where our own survival is dependent on this socially, economically, and politically. I must say that Pan-Africanism's Pan fluidity and flexibility makes it very much useful for our time as well. While in earlier times, Pan-Africanism may have been about black people, the times have changed, and it now encompasses African people of all colors. Africa, like many parts of the world today, is a rainbow continent. In fact, taking it further as per Ali Mazri's argument, Africa was the birthplace of, all, of modern man, and hence all man is descended from Africa. Africa thus has a responsibility to all of mankind, and it is this responsibility that we want to invoke and take up. The joke has been going on for too long, and we, its citizens, are finally taking responsibility into our hands and engaging in discussions that we hope will enrich the country's governance. Among the challenges we face is a question of how to effectively reach out to the earlier African diaspora, here meaning the Carib in the Caribbean and in America. Indeed, in some sense, this does mean black people, people of African descent around the world. It's no secret that black people around the world are among the most badly off, economically, socially, and politically. In America, for instance, black people make up less than 10% of the population, yet make up 35% of, of, of the population in prison and jail. The Afro-Caribbean countries are an island of desolation amidst growing prosperity in that part of the world. The Pan-African dream of the 1900s and 1950s thus did not complete its mandate. This is part of the mission our generation hoped to take up and fulfill, dear conference participants. As I end, I'd like to say a huge thank you to the great people that were part of the planning for this conference, the Africa Society Conference Planning Committee. If they could just stand wherever they are and wave their hands, I'd like to mention them by name. Um, Teresha Orubu, who is the chair of the committee. <laughs> Maybe I'll just mention them and then we'd like to appreciate them. Nelson Opong, who's our Secretary General. <laughs> Mimi Hoffman, who's been in charge of publicity and, and who did a lot, who's been really fundamental to it all. John Ganley. Rawia Amar, <laughs> Hannah Dawson, who you met as you were registering, Ayokunu Adedokun, <laughs> Jessica Thorne, <laughs> and Hanukkah Byton, <laughs> who's, not, who's not here right now. But in addition, I'd also like to thank I'd also like to m mention Moshe Molefe, um, who was a crucial party of the organizing, but he had to leave last week for urgent business in South Africa, and it's unfortunate that he couldn't join us. But this is the group that has been able to organize this and um, that we, we, we do owe a lot to, and so we just want to say thank you for this. This group worked tirelessly to make this event come to pass and were extremely unselfish of their time and energy. 
they are the mad men and women of today. And of course I say that with the most reverence possible. The mad men and women that the great, that Thomas Sankara talked about, the ones that dare turn their back on the old formulas of doing things, possessing a faith that moves mountains. And I'd also like to thank everyone for indeed um, just responding to this stream. And I'd like to also thank our sponsors to this event, the African Studies Center, under the leadership of Dr. David Pratton. Thank you very much. I call him one of the founding fathers of AfroSoc. <laughs> um, because the center has been wonderful. Thanks to them, we have this venue, and they've been crucial in the running. And just to say a big thank you to them. Um, think Africa Press also came on to sponsor, that, to sponsor this. Um, and I'd also like to thank Professor Rolf Mustafa, our patron seated there at the back. <laughs> and Professor Rolf Mustafa is a great man. He has been, he has overseen Afrosox because Afrosox had died. It, 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 it has this way of sort of um, dying and getting reborn and dying and getting reborn. So um, the, the current committee the, the current AfriSoc was re, um, started last year, early last year, and he's been overseeing it uh, very helpfully and just being there always to give advice and also giving out of his own resources. And, and we just want to say a, a big thank you. And Patricia Daly as well um, for all her advice, um, as well as the Tajuddin Abdul Rahim committee. We want to say thank you. As we, as I, as we, Asha, our keynote speaker, here to speak. I'd like to encourage all those from outside Oxford to feel very much at home today. I'd also like to encourage everyone to engage openly and not feel restrained to contribute where you feel you'd like to. We hope at the end of this event, we all will feel more emboldened to take ownership of Africa at a more personal level and use the opportunity we may have here in England for now to make a difference in the continent. Let's, let's go crazy in our dreaming and designing the future, friends. Let's dare to invent the future. I'd just like to introduce Professor Horace Campbell, our keynote speaker. Um, professor Campbell is a noted international peace and justice scholar and professor of African American studies and political science at Syracuse University in New York. He's been involved in Africa's liberation struggles and in the struggles for peace and justice globally for more than four decades. From his years in Toronto, Canada, to his sojourns in Uganda, Tanzania, Zimbabwe, the United Kingdom, and parts of the Caribbean, he's been an influential force offering alternatives to the hegemonic ideas of Eurocentrism. In an attempt to theorize new concepts of revolution in the 21st century, he's been seeking to expand on the idea of fractals and the importance of emancipatory ideals ideas. Um, Professor Campbell came in very, very kindly. Um, we'd, we'd earlier hoped to have him here, but we weren't able. At some point, we had some glitches, but we're just very grateful that at the end that we are, we do have him here with us, and we're just very honored um, to have him present. So just welcome Professor Horace Campbell.